Hey everyone, it's Dan at SP Motorsport. In this week's product spotlight, we're going over our OE Plus Performance Intake Manifold for the 2011 to current 6.7 Power Stroke. We're kind of lagging behind on this video. We were, we were supposed to shoot it a lot sooner than now. We teased it in a few prior videos and said that it was gonna be upcoming shortly and we totally forgot about it. So we're gonna go over what the product is, how it looks on the truck, all the pieces and parts you get in the kit and kind of give you a nice rundown on it. So before we do that though, I'm going to show you the progression and the changes of the factory intake manifolds throughout the years so that you can kind of better understand uh, the, the design changes and the progression from stock to where we are. So the earlier models, so this would be like a 2011 to, this would be a 2011 to 2019 upper intake manifold and lower intake manifold. So you got a lot going on here. Uh, on the factory truck, they do a lot of different things in a, a very small area. So you have low pressure and high pressure air that's passing through this system. So if you look, I'm gonna flip this around, we'll start on this side. This is your lower intake manifold, this cast piece. This cast system starts by feeding the inlet of the turbo, so your, your air filter connects to this end the turbo draws from this end, and then that's your, that's your, your suction air, so to speak. Comes out of the turbo, gets pressurized, goes through the intercooler, and then comes back into the cast piece via the throttle valve, which will go on right here. I'll show you the throttle valve on the other intake. It'll go in through the throttle valve, and now we're high pressure. Goes up through here, up into the plastic upper intake manifold, then down into the valve covers slash intake manifolds that goes down to the heads. You have low pressure and high pressure going on in the system. There's a, a few things that hold these back as far as the performance aspect of them and just the way they operate. One of the key things that not a lot of people talk about that Ford is very keen on is in the factory intake manifolds, they very much are worried about noise. So, you know, how turbos have silencer rings, they do the same type of thing to the upper intake manifolds. So, you'll have in the lower intake here, we have these two ports here that are actually connected in a way to the suction side. So, all your induction noise you're gonna get from the sucking of the turbo, the sound, the, the general engine noise on the, the inlet side of the turbo is fed up through these two ports here. And then those two ports dead end and go nowhere up into the upper intake manifold into these. And these are literally mufflers. They're, they're silencer chambers, so to speak, that they build into the upper intake manifold. So there's a lot of, in my opinion, dumb and complicated things going on in a very simple part. So this is the high pressure, pressure passages. These are low pressure on the suction side. And then same thing here with a separated, I'll show you. You have your low pressure, and then this is your high pressure going in the throttle valve. It loops up like this and comes out into the upper intake and then down into the actual cylinder heads. And then EGR flow is also introduced into this as well. So as I said, CC, there's a lot of things going on. You got CCV, low pressure, high pressure air, EGR flow, all kinds of things going on. The, one of the major things with this is this wall in here. So looking in the throttle valve opening here, you can see there's this little 
cylindrical kind of nozzle inside that opening. And that is actually your EGR. And it's forced into this wall here, which is restricted because behind the throttle valve, you have a wall. So it has to come in, hit that wall, swirl down and around, and then go up to the upper intake manifold. So there's a lot of restriction going on, lots of stuff going on. So that, that's the basic principle. As I said, that's 11 to 19. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the 2020 to current setup, which you can obviously see changed. But ironically, you have all of the same stuff happening. So you have your separate lower intake manifold, which is the plastic section here, which has your CCV connections. It still has the stupid, in my opinion, maybe people don't, don't want them, but I, I don't want them, but maybe people do want them. I'm not sure, but has the stupid mufflers built into the lower intake manifold to quiet down the induction noise. Uh, the one thing they did is they separated and kind of flip-flopped the materials. So now the lower intake's plastic rather than cast aluminum and vice versa on the upper intake manifold, it's aluminum rather than plastic, which if you think about it from factory form, 2020 up makes a little bit more sense because why pressurize plastic? I would rather pressurize aluminum makes more sense. So anyway, this is a slight upgrade, but digging deeper into it, it's still the same exact thing. Your throttle valve here on the end has the same swirl nozzle on the inside of it. You have your EGR flow going in the same spot, still a wall there, and then it swirls up around. You can actually get a really good look at that and what it's actually doing. So you have a lot of pinch points and different things that they're that Ford's doing from the factory based upon noise and a lot of other things and yeah so a lot of there's a lot of potential here and we saw a lot of potential so what we did is clearly we changed it we wanted to create something that was completely compliant with all of the factory components it has all of the original connections. It is a replacement part. So you take your stuff off, you put this back on. There's no tuning required, but you can already see everything's larger. So the first thing we always do from a performance aspect is we're analyzing flow. So we use a lot of CFD, whether it's turbochargers, whether it's intake manifolds, exhaust melt, it doesn't matter. We do a lot of CFD. We really put a lot of time into making sure flow, flow is good. So the first thing we do is we drop the factory components, utilize them, flow them, check them, and we'll even do it on the flow bench in real world. And really optimize flow. That's the key thing. Anything, you know, at, at the end of the day, an engine's an air pump. So in and out is good. The easier you can get it in and out is, is better. So what we did is took that first approach everything's larger. So even from the throttle valve area of the intake manifold itself, starting here, we're utilizing the exact size of the throttle valve. It doesn't neck down behind it. It's a nice smooth transition. The ID of this is large, as large as or bigger than 90% of the cold side pipes that are feeding it. So the other thing we did is we optimized, optimized the way that the EGR flow enters the intake manifold in a way that it's not disrupting, it's not, everything's kind of cohesively working together. It's balanced. And the cool thing about doing all this when you take the time and you're not worried about noise when developing it, and you're not worried about those types of things that the factory's worried about, there's a lot of potential there. So. Throwing this intake manifold on a completely stock truck uh, is the test bed behind us here, which is a 24HO truck. The, the cool thing with it is we changed nothing, just a replacement intake manifold. Throw it on the truck, we gained 30 rear wheel horsepower. So 
Truck's completely compliant. No check engine lights, no tuning. Everything works as it should. And it's really a simple replacement. So keeping the same theme that Ford did from 20 plus, we're doing a, a plastic lower intake adapter. So connecting to the turbo is very similar manner, but we don't have stupid muffler boxes on it. It's a more streamlined design. And another crazy thing, by eliminating a lot of this stuff and making everything more streamlined, one of the cool things about it is the truck's actually easier to work on. It looks better. It's easier to get the things. Everything functions nicer. So, but yeah, so that's streamlined in the same manner. All the CCV provisions are still there. So we offer a lot of different options for that. So one of the things we're kind of priding ourselves on with our upper intake manifold set up in this scenario is the fact that we're integrating as we always do with modular designs, like with turbo kits and other things like that. Our CCV kits are able to be plumbed into our intake manifold kit. So we have different options. So if you're running a, say, say you still have the factory CCV box on the truck, you're able, you're able to throw a grommet in it. We have an adapter that'll pop right in here with the grommet and you can re reconnect the factory CCV hose. Everything works as it's supposed to. We have other adapters that we can put in the same hole that adapts to say our recirculating CCV and everything connects as it would and factory form. So that's the one thing we, we always try to do at SP is if we can keep things modular so that when you purchase products, if you're changing one that's next to a product that you already purchased, they'll intertwine together, they'll work together, they'll still connect, everything functions as it should. So obviously we're giving you all the couplers, giving you all the basic hardware that you need. The Intake does have some adapters that we give you to go to different year trucks. So as it sits here, this is a 20 plus configuration. If we want to put it on an older truck, this allowed us to keep this basic design without having to make the throttle valve area look weird. We came up with an adapter that changes the bolt pattern and it bolts right to the intake manifold and adjust the bolt pattern because the throttle valves change. So that's kind of a cool feature that we wanted to do. Uh, we did a couple different versions in the CAD design where we adjusted this so that we could fit the bolt pattern and, and, and that. And I'm, I'm a very cosmetic, I like the cosmetic look as just as much as the performance aspect of it. So we wanted it to look as streamlined as possible. So this was a much easier solution to kind of adjust it. So we did that. And then we also have a map sensor adapter for the earlier map sensor. So the 20 plus map sensor bolts right to this manifold. And then if you have a 11 to 19 truck, we give you an adapter with the kit that pops down in there. And then the factory map sensor bolts right in. So pretty simple. The installation of this is no different than the factory unit. It's actually a lot easier, easier to get to the bolts. That covers the basis of this. And sorry again for uh, <laughs> dragging this, this video out. We should have did it a lot sooner and we didn't. As I said, no tuning required, throw it on your truck. Everything's gonna work as it should. Lots of CCV options. So you guys are able to uh, adjust accordingly, whether you have previous parts that we make or whether you're connecting your factory stuff, it, it all applies here and it all works. So yeah, so the, there are some more performance stats and stuff on the website in the description for this. So you can check that stuff out. As I said, on the truck behind us on the HO, we actually saw, saw a uh, 30, 30 horsepower, wheel horsepower gain with it. but you will notice a very big difference in the way the vehicle drives. It's way better. So we're very pleased with it. It's an excellent upgrade over the factory parts. The, the other nice thing is just the aesthetics under the hood. So if you're 
pop in your hood to show somebody this is a great part to even powder coat match it to the truck whatever some guys are really into that it, it just has a really nice aesthetic look to it and it goes good with other components like our xd cold side that they kind of complement each other and, and and look very similar so yeah so it's a lot of cool options if you guys have questions on this i know there's a lot of stuff here to digest if you have questions on it whether it be you know the ccv options or how that stuff connects whatever it may be uh, hit us up let us know give us a call shoot us an email uh, we'd be more than happy to help you uh, comment on this video too we, we try to keep up on the comments and get back to anybody we can uh, but if you need something quick please call us give us a ring shoot us an email we'd be more than happy to help you and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.